Start it. Good morning. I'm Mike Headley. I'm the Executive Director with the South Dakota Science and Technology Authority. And on behalf of the Authority and the Lux uh, Experiment Collaboration, we're honored and thrilled that you're here this morning uh, to be a part of the announcement of the first physics results for the Lux Experiment and also the first results for the Sanford Lab since Ray Davis uh, received his Nobel Prize in Physics back in 2002. So not only a very exciting day for Lux, but a very exciting day for the laboratory as well as we uh, move forward. Uh, in reflecting back as we've gotten to this point, I'm reminded that five years ago when we first started dewatering the underground, uh, the lab that Lux occupies today was 300 feet underwater. 17 months ago, we were here actually in the same room celebrating the completion of the construction of the Davis campus. And now here we are uh, in uh, October of 2013 celebrating the first results for Lux. So again, we're glad you're here and a very exciting day for the experiment and for us. So before uh, we start the, the program, I'd like to take just a moment and recognize uh, a few of the dignitaries who are with us here today and people who have played a major role in the, the development of the lab and, and support of Lux and getting to this milestone. Uh, would like to recognize Governor Dennis Dugard, uh, former Governor Mike Rounds. Uh, also, um, Mr. T. Denny Sanford. Denny was not able to be here today, but wanted me to pass along his congratulations to the team for a job well done. And we want to thank Denny for his tremendous support of the lab. Uh, from our South Dakota congressional delegation, representing uh, Senator John Thune, Mr. Kasai Hodge, Senator Tim Johnson, uh, representing him, Mr. C Chris Blair. Representing Representative Christy Noem, Mr. Brad Otten. Uh, we have members of the South Dakota Legislature here with, the, with us today. Thank you for coming. Uh, also, our members of the uh, uh, South Dakota Science and Technology Board of Directors. And we'd also like to represent or recognize our partner, um, Barrett Gold Corporation, Mr. Todd Dix. Our federal agency officials, uh, our partners in, in this endeavor from the Department of Energy, the Associate Director for DOE's Office of High Energy Physics, Dr. Jim Segrist. And then we have uh, other federal officials who are watching live uh, via the web this morning. Uh, DOE's Office of High Energy Physics Dark Matter Program Officer, Dr. Michael Solomon. And from the National Science Foundation, the Director of the NSF Physics Division, Dr. Denise Caldwell. And the director, I'm sorry, the program directors uh, related to the Lux experiment, Dr. Gene Cottam Allen and Dr. Jim Whitmore. Uh, representing the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and the uh, Sanford Underground Research Facility Operations Office, we have the Associate Laboratory Director for Physical Sciences, Dr. James Simons. The Physics Division Director, Dr. Natalie Rowe. The Operations Head for the Sanford Underground Research Facility, Dr. Kevin Lesko. The Deputy Operations Head for the Sanford Underground Research Facility, Dr. Gail Gilcrease. Uh, we have a number of representatives from current experiments at the lab and future experiments. We'd like to re uh, uh, recognize the co-principal investigators and the spokespersons from the various collaborations that are part of the lab. And then uh, would also like to recognize and, and congratulate um, from the authority, I'd like to congratulate the Lux collaboration uh, it's been our pleasure working with you in, uh, in getting to this point and the partnership that we've had over the last few years. We really treasure having, having you here at the site and, and being a part of the team. Uh, and then and finally, I'd like to recognize the, the 125 employees of the Science and Technology Authority. Uh, it's really been my pleasure to be a part of this team and for us to reach this milestone is really, uh, it's really amazing and uh, it's been great to work with you. All right, with that, We'll uh, jump into the program and we'll start off with a laboratory overview. Just like to spend a few minutes and give you um, some background on the laboratory as you hear about Lux today and the initial results. Our current underground science program, uh, our main physics experiments, we'll start with the Myrana demonstrator program. Uh, Myrana is uh, studying a rare form of nuclear decay called neut neutrino stubble beta decay, really trying to understand the, uh, the properties uh, of neutrinos and um, uh, their mass and uh, whether they're on antiparticle and so forth. 
Uh, obviously, the, the Lux experiment, the Large Underground Xenon experiment, trying to uh, directly detect dark matter. Uh, we also have the CUBED experiment. This is a, a background counting experiment that's actually led by uh, primarily South Dakota universities, uh, led by Dr. Don Ming Mai. And then we also have, and have had for, uh, for quite a while, ever since we started reentry in the lab, a number of biology, geology, and engineering related experiments, or what we lovingly call the Bee Gees. So this, uh, this graphic gives you a, an aerial photo overview. It's a little hard to see, but uh, you can see this is the, the laboratory uh, facility, our surface campus outlined here, 186 acres on the surface, uh, 7,700 acres underground. We have two complexes that we operate. Each one has a shaft that goes down approximately 5,000 feet deep. Uh, the first one is the Ross complex located right here. I'll, I'll tell you in a few minutes about a construction project that we have going with the Ross to replace uh, all the furnishings in that shaft to get it ready for future construction. But, so we operate the, the Ross complex. Uh, also the AIDS complex, which is where we're at right now. And just behind us, we have the AIDS shaft, which is our primary access way in the underground to support science. Uh, obviously, we're located right up against the city of Leeds. Uh, you can see here the, uh, the open cut. Uh, and this, so this gives you an idea of what our, uh, what our surface uh, footprint looks like. Our underground geography. Uh, we have science, as you look over here on the left-hand side of the slide, we have science on a number of levels in the underground. Uh, above the 4850 are primarily the Bee Gees, the biology, geology, and engineering related experiments. Um, on the 4850 level is where we have our, our physics activities in the Davis campus. I'll show you a few slides about the Davis in a minute, but uh, we have the Davis, and this includes Lux, Myrana, and Cubed. And then the Ross campus, uh, we have a, an electroforming laboratory that's been working to generate ultra-pure copper in support of the Myrana demonstrator experiment for a little over two years now. And uh, basically what they're doing in this lab is taking commercial grade copper and uh, electroforming it, uh, bringing it down in, in copper nuggets and then electroforming it onto a stainless steel cylinder to try and get all of the impurities in the copper, radiometric impurities out of the copper to be able to use it for the experiment. So those are our main physics activities on the 4850. Uh, we have shafts and, uh, that we use for access, as I mentioned, other uh, shafts for ventilation. We have a water treatment plant that we use. And then uh, in total, we have 370 miles of tunnels from the surface all the way down to 8,000 feet deep. And uh, we basically, we maintain about 12 miles of that for actual science and facility operations. If those on the phone, if you could mute your phone, please, that would be appreciated. All right, the, uh, moving forward, here's the Davis campus, gives you a plan view. Uh, the uh, Yates shaft, which intersects the, the uh, 4850 right here, and we have the big X, the, the path the scientists walk uh, in the morning to come into the lab is they come down the shaft, go here to the big X, and then walk into the laboratory. We have the, uh, the lab that's dedicated to the Myrana demonstrator experiment. And then the Davis Cavern, where Lux and the Cubed experiments live. Uh, this is actually within this cavern right here is where Ray Davis did his um, Nobel Prize winning work many years ago. Uh, in total, the, uh, the development of this lab, which I mentioned we finished this last year, was a $15.2 million uh, development uh, sponsored by the state through money with, um, from T. Denny Sanford. The entire area is roughly 30,000 square feet. The lab space itself, about 10,000 square feet. Uh, as I mentioned, construction completed last year, and uh, construction was completed with no lost time injuries, so a, a track record we're, uh, we're pretty proud of. This is the entrance to the lab space. You can see the, uh, the, where the shaft intersects the level right here. Scientists come off, walk into the entrance to the lab space right here. Kind of moving forward into where Myrana is located. Uh, within a portion of their space, they have uh, the world's deepest clean room machine shop that's been established. And you can see the, uh, the lathe that's in the, in the foreground here. This is a lathe that they use for the initial machining of the copper. You can see some of the ultra pure copper mounted up in this lathe. Uh, in total, about three, three quarters of a million dollars worth of machine tools. And so um, we've, uh, we've been claiming for a while now this is the world's deepest, cleanest machine shop. No one has told us we're wrong, so we're, we're going to keep pressing with that story. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'll get an email or two after this is done on that topic. 
Okay, uh, moving forward into the, the actual Mirana uh, detector assembly space, so a bit further down in the laboratory. Um, you're looking actually inside what they call the glove box. This is uh, where Mirana does a lot of the, um, the actual assembly of the of detector elements. And you can see Mirana researchers, uh, at least their hands. And uh, uh, these two researchers are working on the, uh, as I mentioned, the, the um, actually assembly of the, de the uh, portion of the, uh, of the detector that will uh, be used for operations of Mirana. These, uh, these folks are actually wearing five pairs of gloves in this operation. It's an incredibly clean space. Uh, for those of you who are uh, aware of clean rooms and, and that type of thing, this is a, a very clean space. It's a, a class 100 clean room. So um, when they go into the space, they wear bunny suits and, and so forth. So cleanliness is a, is a, is a big factor for, their, uh, for the experiment. Moving forward into the, to the Davis campus or the Davis cavern, uh, we have the Lux experiment. Uh, uh, Rick and Dan, as part of the science lecture this morning, will show you a lot more pictures about Lux, but wanted to just show you one shot. Uh, the Lux, or I'm sorry, the Davis cavern is actually a two floor facility, and you're looking at the upper floor here. Uh, this is a lot of the um, equipment related to Lux. There's a 70,000 gallon water tank located below this area right here that Lux is in, uh, in a uh, deionized water that provides additional shielding for the experiment. So that gives you an idea of what the lab looks like today. And uh, wanted to give you an idea of where we're going in the future and uh, with, uh, with future experiments. And uh, the areas that are outlined in blue here, these are existing lab spaces. So the Davis campus right here, the Ross campus right here, these, as I mentioned earlier, these are existing. Uh, going down the right-hand side here, these are experiments that we're uh, projecting to come here in the future and lab space that we would plan to build out to be able to support that. Uh, for future dark matter and neutrinos double beta decay experiments, we're planning an experiment hall located right here. Just from a scale perspective, this is about uh, 100 meters in length, so a little bit over 300 feet long. So a fairly sizable space. Um, the next is an experiment, a partnership that we're uh, working on with uh, Fermilab. Uh, this is called the Long Baseline Neutrino Experiment. And basically this detector uh, will be filled with 34 kilotons of liquid argon and we'll study neutrinos and the various properties of neutrinos. And this detector is actually pointed directly at Chicago, where Fermilab is located. And so, as part of this project, they would direct a beam of neutrinos at this detector, and uh, we would receive those and then study the results. So, moving on uh, down the list here, we have um, two nuclear astrophysics experiments, really a phase one and phase two of the same experiment. CASPER, this is a uh, low-power accelerator experiment, really the phase one of a project called DIANA or the dual ion accelerators for nuclear astrophysics. Uh, basically, these are two low-powered accelerators that would be deployed underground to study um, the processes associated with dying stars. And the next one would be, uh, or is, the low background counting. So I talked about CUBE doing low background counting over in the Davis campus. We're planning on establishing a larger low background counting facility located over by the Ross. I mentioned the, uh, the raw shaft and work that we're doing on that to get it ready for future experiments. Um, we've been in the process over the last year of refurbishing the raw shaft. This is a project we're self-performing within the authority. Um, we Basically, we're going through removing all the old steel that was installed in the shaft back in the 1930s and, and so forth. You can see it here, uh, fairly corroded. Uh, it will, it's really not in a, in a shape to support long-term operations. And replacing that, uh, we've replaced about the top uh, 1,130 feet of that shaft um, steel uh, going all the way down to 5,000 feet. Uh, we're planning on, on completing this project by June of 2017. Uh, this project is required for lb and &E and really for all the future large excavations that I just talked about on the previous slide. Uh, you can see our handiwork over on this side. This gives you a picture of the new steel that's been installed. And uh, as I mentioned, this will be done in a few years and, and in time to support the long baseline neutrino experiment um, schedule. So my last slide, um, I want to focus briefly on our work with education and outreach. Um, a major portion of the Sanford gift was dedicated to um, advancing education and outreach here in the state. Really, um, our efforts to try and advance science, technology, engineering, and math education um, for K through 12, support the, the teaching of teachers to be able to teach our kids. And so um, we're making some significant investments in facilities to support education and outreach work here in the state. 
Um, the first example of that is a project that we're working on. It's a collaborative effort with the LEAD uh, Chamber and the Homestake Visitor Center. And uh, it's building a new visitor center right down at the open cut. You can see the building here. It's about 8,000 square feet, a $2.5 million project that we're expecting to start construction on next spring. Uh, we're also making significant facility investments um, up at Black Hill State. We're, uh, we have a, a very strong partnership with Black Hill State in education and outreach related work. And so we're planning on uh, upgrading the Jonah Science Hall up at Black Hill State. That construction will start next year as well. And eventually this building that we're in right now will be renovated to support future education and outreach and science support activities. So um, making a lot of great progress in this area as well. So I wanted to pass that along. And with that, uh, that's the overview. Thank you uh, for letting me go through that. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, the uh, gentleman who will be providing the science seminar this morning, really the, the results of the Lux work, um, Dr. Rick Gateskill from Brown University and Dr. Dan McKenzie from Yale.